company that brought groundbreaking innovation to the sport of horse racing comes a brand new show. Welcome to Wire to Wire. I'm Christina Blacker, joined by the Sarge Nick Hines here in the TVG studios. This is a show all about the My Race Horse Stable, a stable that can be yours. And that's the most exciting thing about this company. Nick, I have had the chance to be a part of some of the developments in the last six months or so, but you've been a part of the My Race Horse team from the beginning. What has it been like for you to watch the progression of my racehorse to the point that they are at now in the horse racing industry. Well, for, for all the anticipation of it, it's been literally mind blowing. Uh, you know, it's not only gone for here uh, domestically in the United States, but it's turned into a global affair. So uh, the infiltration to the international market has taken it to a whole other extreme. But for me, on a personal uh, basis, you know, this this is a, essentially a dream come true for me in a sense that you have the opportunity to uh, work with owners in sport and uh, those aspiring. Uh, shareholders, people that never felt that they could have an opportunity to get uh, involved in something so great, uh, meaning, hey, I own a thoroughbred racehorse and this is a chance of a lifetime, and as they say it, in a lifetime of chance. So it truly has been a rise in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. I always like in uh, my racehorse, for example, in the NFL with an expansion the franchise that comes in, but this is a, of a whole different ilk. I mean, this is a different league. This is next level. And uh, for me personally, it's uh, it's been quite a, quite a magical ride. The opportunity is there, as they say in the promo. It's there for you. And one of the things that my racehorse takes so seriously is their education. We want to teach you about this game. We want to teach you about the horses. And so we're going to teach you today about the stable. Let's start with some recent success stories. We've had quite a few winners from my racehorse as of late. So we'll jump right into it. Duke of Love is the first horse we're going to take a look at. And this is back in early November at Woodbine. So we're talking about uh, racing up in Canada. What a ride and what a trip from jockey Justin Stein sneaking through along the inside. Nice effort from this son of Cupid. He was a two-length winner on debut. They thought so much of him that he would step into stakes competition in his subsequent start on the turf course, but off to certainly a good start in his career debut with that victory. Yeah, again, 800 uh, shareholders involved with Duke of Love. He earned a 77 buyer speed figure. Uh, Amore, this is certainly a daughter of Uncle Mo that has, uh, she's got a very bright future. This is an impressive uh, maiden score. December 3rd at Aqueduct, she earned a 74 buyer speed rating. A big salute going out to the 525 shareholders. She's already a grade one placed winning daughter of Uncle Mo out of the pioneer of the Mile, Nile mare, uh, Margaret to Ray, and uh, a special salute going to our partners uh, with Spencer as she, of course, uh, providing in victory, Luis Saez and uh, Todd Pletcher, your uh, winning conditioner. Chasing Time was also a recent winner. We'll go to Churchill Downs. Uh, take a look there between horses. This was a bold move, and this is a determined horse. He had to find some running room for himself there. This was the third start of his career, pushed his way through onto victory by a length and three quarters. Jockey Rafael Bejarano was aboard, running down the leaders. And we're looking forward to seeing him again very soon in action at Oaklawn. Chasing Time, the son of not this time. So you'd have to think as the distances progress, he's only going to get better. Well, certainly uh, in hopes that uh, he can get on that uh, derby trail. And congratulations going out to the 3,900 shareholders, 74 buyer speed figure. Deep cover, we'll feature him a bit later on in the program as well. Uh, what an incredible journey this horse has taken on. A son of uh, Mission Impossible. He was a two-year-old in training purchase, trained by uh, Tom Morley, and uh, beautifully ridden and handled by Javier Castellano. He beat the gate, went on to a sharp score over the turf course here, provided a nice pair of mutual at 10 to 1 earning an 80 buyer speed figure uh, for the 462 shareholders involved uh, pretty remarkable for a horse to come and uh, perform like that on debut not an easy thing to do yeah we want to talk a little bit more about deep cover because he was a bit of a surprise I think with that victory gate to wire score I had the chance to talk to Tom Morley his trainer earlier this morning and he said this horse has just overcome quite a bit and a lot of it was mental as well he did tell me Nick that one of the keys in the mornings at least has been using earplugs or cotton in his ears you can see it right there in that picture <laughs> that white right in the middle of his ears that's some cotton and that will just muffle the sound around him a little bit horses are very sensitive they have excellent vision and hearing can be a little skittish that is part of the routine that has helped him reach his potential so far well you know this is again a horse that was purchased as a two-year-old in training and I, I think if we were to give out a, a trainer of the month award it would most definitely be given to uh, Tom Morley uh, I can appreciate uh, the fact that uh, from a content standpoint you know we at my racehorse uh, our hope is that uh, we can get 
content to to share with the uh, the partners and the shareholders just to kind of give them some inside uh, insight and perspective on these horses on a daily basis this horse has been a challenge from a physical standpoint yes he's overcome a surgery yes he was gelded along the way but mentally when he came back it took a lot of uh, his team in Tom Morley to get this horse to assert himself the talent's there but it's the mental game and uh, the hope is that he can evolve off of that uh, big win I mean again it was a, a surprise uh, fortunately I put a few dollars on here at TVG <laughs> but uh, I think at the same time uh, this is a horse that I think has uh, limitless potential now that Tom has him ironed out outside post in that race as well he had the speed to get to the lead and so we're definitely looking forward to the progression you can follow along on the app so you'll have all sorts of updates with regard to deep cover and just his journey it's already off to a good start but it's taken a lot to get to this point another aspect that we offer you here on my racehorse is just to take a look at the training in the mornings and how these horses are preparing for each and every race and a lot of that is done in the morning with their timed works about once a week a horse will put in a work against the clock you're taking a look at micro share she's on the outside of these two horses this was on December the 11th at Santa Anita her home base she is trained by Richard Mandela and Nick I love this work because it is after her career debut and she seems like she's taken everything in stride she's very classy she does just what they ask of her she covers a lot of ground with that beautiful stride yeah, well, I, I know that uh, you are near and dear to this particular individual. I, I enjoyed the uh, the segment uh, on TVG uh, with Mike Rocher when she debuted back on November 20th. This is a uh, daughter upstart, and uh, you took your hard-earned dollars and <laughs> invested did. as a shareholder as well. I think it's very special, and I think Lady Luck is on her side as a result of that. Thank you. We will talk a little bit more about Mike Rocher a little bit later on in the program, but that was the work of the month from Mike Rocher just a few days ago. Uh, we will see her at San to Anita in action very, very soon. Looking forward to her progression as well. Another exciting offering on the app is just some insight into race tactics and into what you'll see from certain horses each and every afternoon when they compete. And really the best way to do that is to get a jockey's perspective. Nobody knows better than the jockeys that have been able to ride them or that have a history of success on the racetrack. And I know we have his bio up, but I don't think Gary Stevens, the Hall of Famer, needs much of an introduction, Nick. Not at all. I mean, you consider uh, what he had done in his career and listen to the Hall of Fame uh, at a, a much younger age. And, and certainly, uh, when you look back at some of the greats that uh, he had ridden, uh, Phillies come to mind, of course, winning colors, winning the Kentucky Derby. But in recent memory, uh, Spendthrift owned Beholder, which uh, in my eyes, Gary Stevens, uh, he epitomized timeless on horseback. There he is in those Spencer silks in the promo as well. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at this segment, we want to share one with you now. Gary Stevens takes a look back, two races back from Amore and her trip. On my racehorse, Gary Stevens here to talk about Amore, November 7th at Belmont Park, going one mile with Louis Saez aboard for Todd Fletcher. Um, she gets an excellent break at the, at the start of the race. Louis, one of the best uh, gate riders in the country in my eyes. And uh, once again, a good start. Todd Pletcher's horses, they always break good, it seems like, and, uh, in this uh, perfect stocking position. Three deep right now, just off of the lead, half a length off, very, very comfortable. Uh, beautiful stride on her, straight and even. Um, Louis just being patient right now, not taking it out of what she wants to do. Um, laying three quarters of the length off of uh, the, the leaders right now. Third on the outside, of course, going to come up on her inside, but uh, she looks very professional after that first run that she had. Uh, just cruising along uh, with about uh, five eighths of a mile left to run at this point in the race. Uh, very happy with, uh, with their position. Nothing has really changed. No excuses whatsoever from here. Um, she's again in a perfect rhythm and Louie not asking for a whole lot is there. Uh, just past the 3 8 pole, getting ready to approach the quarter pole and the, the final run uh, to the money. Um, it's uh, everybody had to be licking their chops uh, at this point in time as they enter that stretch. Again, she's uh, three deep, very, very comfortable. One thing that I, I did notice is uh, she was just a tad late uh, switching into her right lead, uh, but she's reaching right now. She's trying. She's given everything she's got. She finally switched into that right lead the last 16th of a mile, and she surged forward a little bit. And then 
Uh, this was a gritty race and um, that's a heartbreaker right there. I can't make any excuses for it other than that's a very good filly that beat her and your filly is very good. They, they beat the rest of the field by a large margin. This filly is not going to be a maiden much longer. I know that's disappointing that she didn't get the money at short price the other day, but hey, it doesn't matter what price they are. It's the way they do it. And uh, I love this filly's race. And if I was still riding, I'd like to be on her back the next time she runs. All right, guys, thanks. And he was absolutely right. So that was the effort two races back where Amare finished second. She learned quite a bit from that race. We showed you the backtrack a little bit earlier in the show where she came back and won. Switch leads on cue, put it all together, and a nice effort out there at Belmont Park with that big, beautiful stride. The daughter of Uncle Mo, very scopy as a lot of his progeny are. We're going to switch gears now and talk about the sales because, of course, that's where this all begins with a lot of the horses, where we find them, where the Sarge Nick Hines is a part of that team as well, and authentic, really the flagship and the horse that put my racehorse right on the map and made this this company is so popular and so many people available to get in. So he has his first mares in full sold at the recent sales at Keeneland November and Phasic Tipped in November. It's hard 17 mares sold in full to Authentic. And we're taking a look at just a few of the highlights. Well, again, you mentioned the uh, flagship. Uh, we talk about the, the magical ride. And what's remarkable is that when you look at the amount of shareholders that were involved with Authentic, I think it was right around 4,500 uh, to win the first uh, Saturday in September as we reflect on That's COVID right. uh, in, in 2020. But uh, to have done what he had done on the racetrack for that uh, amount of shareholders to, to be involved with Authentic, I mean, it's essentially it's uh, the tip of the iceberg. And you say tip of the iceberg, he was horse of the year. He won the Kentucky Derby, won the Breeders' Cup Classic, won the TBG Haskell. What more can a horse do? But now that you've seen the amount uh, in which they are buying for these mares that are in full to authentic, of course, the son of the uh, the world's greatest in my book and uh, into mischief and major credit going out to uh, B. Wayne Hughes. Unfortunately, uh, the industry lost a, a giant of a man in all aspects of sport, a, a true gentleman. But authentic, uh, his legacy will live on. And, and the, the most wonderful part about that, it's going to be the gift that keeps on giving in a sense that, uh, you know, for those shareholders, look, you enjoyed seeing him on the racetrack, but uh, him being able to send out uh, his runners uh, in years to come is going to be something very special. I can tell you just, you feel a part of the success as you watch those sire lines continue to go on. Same thing with the mares. Just when you've been a part of that foundation, it's always exciting to see the journey continues. So we look forward to more mares selling. We look forward to the yearlings in the year to come and uh, more success and excitement with regard to those involved with Authentic. So let's talk about races that are upcoming in the next few weeks or the next month. There are some targets that we have for you in terms of the horses in the stable right now. And Nick, I do want to say for everybody out there, if you have a share of one of these horses, pencil these in. But to be fair to the trainers, plans change, races change. You never know what's going on. This is the plan as of now. But as we all know with horse racing, things are very fluid. Well, one thing is for sure, uh, horses change like the weather changes, and uh, you certainly want to keep an eye on your calendar. The one thing that I can say about uh, my racehorse as far as their communication and transparency, they take it to a whole nother extreme. They're not pulling any punches, as we uh, found with the journey of a deep cover, for example. Uh, there were folks that I'm sure that wanted, would have wanted to bail ship some six months ago. But when you look at the, uh, the jest, you can see that uh, we're involved from coast to coast, and uh, very much uh, looking forward to it. Of course, the the day after Christmas, uh, some opportunities and no edge racing, an affiliate to, of my racehorse. And uh, you have some capital investment opportunities there with edge as managed uh, by Joe Moran, who is the West Coast uh, racing manager for my racehorse. And it looks to get uh, hot and heavy toward the, the end of the month with uh, edge and their uh, racing group as well. So um, I'm very excited, uh, you know, considering how far we've come, knowing that uh, there are over 45,000 subscribers to uh, my racehorse, 20 5,000 shareholders. Um, we are, are marching forward in 2022 uh, with great anticipation. Keep an eye on the app for any changes or news and notes that you need to know with regard to those upcoming runners. There are some horses available as well. If you would like to be involved, whether you want to add these horses to your existing stable or if you're new to us today or just stumbling across the show and considering getting involved or maybe just dipping a toe in the water, it's pretty easy to take some baby steps, I think, with my racehorse. And that's one of the most wonderful things. So tell me a little bit about Rosie 
Aziz Alibi, part of the Phasic 6. Yeah, the Phasic 6, uh, you know, I, I really... I'm excited. You know, we, we talk about uh, an expansion franchise. For example, you know, we came on board with Authentic, a horse that already had been in motion. It was still obviously a toss of the dice because he hadn't proven yet that he was of that grade one ilk. But in this particular case, this year, uh, being involved there at Saratoga with the Phasic Six is, is something very special, in particular with one individual in uh, Rosie's alibi. This is a daughter of uh, Justify out of that, uh, that Bernardini mare and one that um, you can come in at just a, a, a nominal fee and she has the look uh, of Eagles, as you can see by her eye there in the, uh, the graphic. But uh, you know, she's one of six that uh, have a tremendous potential and uh, Phasic, as you well know, Saratoga Select, they were back here in a big way in 2021 last year being pushed back uh, until September. Anytime you're able to take horse, take a horse home from the Phasig uh, sale over there in Saratoga in the summer, you know that you have stepped away with something special. Let's learn a little bit more here about Rosie's Alibi. And they're into the stretch, and Justify comes roaring home to a raucous Belmont Park. He's just perfect, and now he's just He's a magnificent looking horse himself, Justify. He's a, a stands over a lot of ground. He's 17 hands, big chestnut imposing horse. So it's obviously, we were hoping, given the quality of mares that he got, given the standard of breeders that bred to him, we were very hopeful about this first crop of yearlings. I think the first amount of them that we saw at the Saratoga and at Faisley Tipped in July were a very good representation of what Justify is capable of getting. He's capable of getting very good looking and very well conformed athletes who stand over a lot of ground. And, you know, he, he bred a huge book of very, very good broodmares. He, he, in his first crop, he got 59 grade one winners or producers in fold. I mean, he bred the best of the best. He bred some of the best mares in the business, was supported by the best, best breeders in the business. Those horses, those yearlings will now go to some of the best trainers in the business. And now as we get ready to see his first crop of uh, yearlings go to sale and, and, and next year, obviously, when they hit the tracks, I think we should hopefully see horses that set the world on fire. We sold Hip 90 at the 100th Phasic Tipped in Saratoga sale. It was a Justify filly out of a Bernardini mare named Essential Rose, PA bred. First crop by Justify, Triple Crown winner um, a couple years ago. Very exciting time. The only other one was American Pharaoh in the last 30-something years. She was just a really nice filly, a lot of leg to her, a lot of quality, class as soon as she stepped off the van. Everybody wants to Justify these days, right? And I think by far she was the best Justify in the sale. I had multiple people come up to me and they said, you got the best Justify. I'm not a doubt about it, I get down 625, I had to get down, you want 625, and 625. If number 90 is a exciting filly by um, Triple Crown winner, Justify. So first crop for him, it's, we're really excited to get one. That was a goal. Um, I thought she was the best one that was here. So that was, uh, we were happy to land that one. $625,000 at Woody. Justify Philly out of Bernardini Mayor Essential Rose was a standout, uh, I think, for a lot of people at the Saratoga sale this year. Uh, it's no surprise that she brought the price she did. She is very pretty, beautiful filly, very good mover. Uh, she's balanced, she's got the strength, but she looks classy. Um, and she's got the pedigree to match. I think this filly's got unlimited potential, I really do. She's built like she has a lot of speed. So anytime you're looking, you know, you can get a Justify or any prominent stallion and you can throw Bernardini and AP and D-line on the bottom. It's a, it's a grand slam in my opinion. Effortless performance by Bernardini. Bernardini, brilliant once again. Hip number 90 is a big, tall, scopey filly, half sister to a horse uh, that won a stake at Saratoga. It is Rose's vision up the rail, and Rose's vision is going to do it in the better tuck now. From a Bernardini mare, and he's been a sensational brood mare sire also. It's a justify. He won the triple crown. We want to win the big races. We're just happy for all the partners of my racehorse. You know, I think it's a great thing that everybody can come in and pitch in and, and buy a horse of this kind of caliber, you know, to go to the races and hopefully they're sitting there on the first Friday of May uh, in the Oaks Winter Circle in a couple years. As everyone goes to Saratoga hoping to acquire a horse like American Pharaoh or a filly of the quality of Songbird or go to you know, a filly like Tepa and they can go to Royal Ascot and win. We literally scout the country. 
We sort through between 2,500 and 3,000 horses that are nominated in the sale from the East Coast to West Coast, North, South. We evaluate horses based upon their physical conformation and their pedigree and try to select the best of the best to go to Saratoga. And it's been our premier sale for, for over 100 years now. Yeah, the Phase 6 Select Bonus is really interesting. So we went to the sale to really try to walk away with the next big star. Uh, and we worked out a deal that if any of these horses win the Kentucky Derby or the Kentucky Oaks, which is really what we went into the sale looking for, a big two-turn quality horse, that we were going to pay an extra $2 million to the owners of that, of that race horse. So really great way. Not only do you get the improvement in value when they win a race like that, you get the purse money from it, and on top of that, we're going to give them those $2 million. Certainly they acquire the, you know, the types of horses that could be uh, you know, major, major uh, influences, both on the racetrack and in the breeding shed. You know, we all hope and dream for having the big horse uh, that's what the game is built upon, and it wouldn't surprise me at all to see some major runners come out of uh, the Saratoga sale this year for my racehorse. It's all about dreaming big in this game. The hope, the excitement with any horse, but it's pretty easy, I think, to do so with a horse like Rosie's Alibi. Oh, absolutely. I, I think it, it really comes down to considering this is the freshman, you know, crop of the uh, sire Justify who won the Triple Crown in, in dramatic fashion. Uh, the yearling average, I think, was right around 370000 and obviously she was purchased for not quite double that amount, but every bit uh, the angles that you would want uh, in an individual. The one thing that stood out the most for me is when you look at the physical, incredible Gaskin, you know, as far as that, that angle is concerned. She certainly gives you the impression that she's not only going to be a horse that uh, would have that length and distance capability, but a horse that uh, could also uh, get it done early on in her career. And what's an interesting element about the pedigree is you have Flame Away, who uh, incidentally ran against uh, Justify uh, in that uh, Kentucky Derby back in uh, 2018. There are still shares available in Rosie's Alibi. If you would like to get involved, you can head to the app. We'll give you a link a little bit later on in the show as well. Another horse we want to tell you about that we still have some shares available for is a horse by the name of Miss Sakamoto. It was purchased at the OBS April sale. Sergeant O, you are right there. And if this is something that you are interested in diving into and you want some immediate action, this might be the horse for you. Miss Sakamoto should be ready to run in January of 2022. Well, she's uh, out of a mare in Wonder Brew, who, uh, again, uh, when you go to the second dam, you may remember the astronic uh, Ginger Brew, who had uh, quite a career in her own right and uh, went on to earn uh, nearly a million dollars in her career. She was a an OBS April purchase. Uh, my recollection, she breezed in 21 flat, went out uh, with, with good enthusiasm. Certainly gives you the impression that uh, she's a horse that not only has that win early uh, flavor to her, but being uh, by, uh, in this case, being by more than ready, I think that there is a tremendous upside for her, not only uh, potentially going long on turf, but I think she may have some dirt capabilities as well. Her sibling, incidentally, was a recent uh, placing in a maiden special weight at Aqueduct. So there's uh, enough appeal there and relevancy in that pedigree to indicate Christophe Clement has her on the winning track. Christophe Clement, the conditioner, he is based in New York. A big fall for him coming off his very first Breeders' Cup victory with Pizza Bianca for celebrity chef Bobby Flay. His barn so strong all through Saratoga the entire uh, last couple of years really on the upward trajectory and not that they needed it. They have always been one of those stables that you look to in New York, but just on fire as of late. So you can head to the website. You can head to the app as well to take a look at any horses that might be available for purchase. So here is a look at that link and we will of course post it to social media and keep you updated each and every day. We do want to be candid. They don't all work out. Not every horse ends up a winner. Not every horse even ends up at the races actually. And that's just a part of the thoroughbred racing journey in general, whether you're involved with my racehorse or you're involved with any other stable across the globe. And so there's one horse we wanted to talk to you about a little bit today, and that's a horse by the name of Solar Strike. Abby Huffman, who is the Midwest racing manager for my racehorse, adopted this horse after many trainers tried to get him to the races. He, however, had some other ideas about what his career might be. Well, as I look 
into his eyes from this vantage point. Uh, this is a horse that I remember, you know, getting involved with and having seen as a yearling. And it's been quite a, quite a journey for Solar Strike. And, and the one thing that I will say was paramount, uh, and you can see Abby uh, uh, doing some dressage and, and getting to know this uh, individual. But uh, since, it seems as if it's been a lot longer, but he's just three years of age. Right. But I remember seeing him at uh, Spendthrift uh, in September uh, of his yearling year, and uh, he was a select purchase. but. His mind was certainly far beyond uh, what many would have hoped. In fact, uh, he made things uh, quite difficult. He'd had the game tricked and uh, actually spent some time with a horse whisperer, but unfortunately could not get him on the uh, the racetrack to uh, perform as a racehorse. But uh, he certainly found his zone now. And uh, Look at Abby, him of course, at the jog though you would never know it. He basically refused to train on the racetrack. He just didn't want any part of right. it out there and you know the trainers have to be cautious because we want to keep everybody safe we want to keep the horses mm -hmm. safe we want to keep the riders safe uh, all the folks that work in their barns as well and so solar strike uh, racing was not in his future but as you can see he's very happy he has been retired there abby have been taking care of him so that's something that the my racehorse crew will handle in the future for any horse whether they are retired due to injury or just uh, retired for any other reason they will be rehomed and we'll find a place where they fit and where they are happy. One of the things that I thought so interesting, Nick, in reading just Abby's kind of testament about how she brought this horse around, she said the first time she got on him, she got on bareback without mm -hmm. a saddle, without any other equipment because she wanted to mentally start fresh with him. And right. I, that, that to me, it just really tells you what kind of a horsewoman she is. Well, she's a daughter of uh, race secretary Ben Huffman. Many are familiar with Ben out there in the uh, great state of uh, Kentucky. You know, she works with our, our Midwest division along with uh, Paige, Paige Alvarado. But but she's a horsewoman. And I, I think the, the relationship, when it all came about and we finally understood that the journey as a racehorse was complete. Mm -hmm. uh, he was not going to go fur further. She was the one that stepped up immediately and says, I want to participate. I want to take this horse in and uh, try and retrain him. And I had two words for her. I said, good luck, you know. <laughs> having been yeah. and seen the journey and having visited the horse uh, in Ocala and just uh, the trials and, and tribulations. But he's a son of Tappet. You know they can be a bit quirky, but uh, he certainly found a, a new lease on life. And again, credit to uh, Michael Behrens, uh, our chief uh, and operator. You know, he wants to make sure that these horses that uh, we've tried to race, race, or no longer can race, that they uh, find a soft spot and land in the, in the right hands. If you at home are ever interested in retiring a racehorse, there are so many organizations. Just go ahead and search online. Many of them accredited new vocations would come to mind. Uh, there are horses that are out there ready for adoption and ready for their second career. If you think that that is something you'd like to be a part of, we would absolutely encourage that. We wanted to focus in on our stable spotlights right now. I have one. We've already kind of teased that, but we'll get to MicroShare in a second. Nick, who is your stable spotlight for the month? Well, for me, it's a son of American Pharaoh, and uh, Forbidden Kingdom is one that uh, certainly I think has a tremendous upside potential. Unfortunately, you know, he's had a few setbacks uh, with his feet. Uh, he'd recently been diagnosed with a, a quarter crack, which not exactly the best time of year for quarter crack issues, but uh, he debuted a smashing one back on August 21st at Del Mar. He's come back twice since stakes place, finishing second in the uh, grade three Bob Hope to uh, a performance former in Messier, who uh, was a game second in the Los uh, Alamitos Futurity uh, last weekend for uh, Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert. But Forbidden Kingdom, for Papa Mandela, I think he has endless potential. And, you know, I am always one that looks into the blessing in the setback. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that he's, you know, he had a few little uh, growing pains, namely his feet. I, I, I think Forbidden Kingdom has uh, endless potential. And Personally, I think he's a first Saturday in May type individual, and the pedigree would suggest that. Uh, and just his movement, his action, um, it was love at first sight for me when uh, he was purchased at the Phasic Select uh, September over a year ago, uh, along with uh, Joe Mishak, Joe Moran. We had an opportunity with Spendthrift to acquisition him, and I think the sky's the limit for a horse that uh, 
could be any any type of an individual. Let's team up because hopefully my horse is a first Friday in May kind of horse. Yes. And my stable spotlight is MicroShare. And this is a filly that I am part owner of. I purchased a share in her for a lot of different reasons. So she's a daughter of Upstarts. And I mentioned this on social media a couple of weeks ago before her debut. Upstart was one of my favorite horses. I don't know what it was about him, but I just felt very kind of connected to that horse when he was running in New York. Also to his trainer, the late Rick Violet. And if you are not familiar Familiar with him, please do some research. Google. He did so much for racing in New York. Was just one of those men that we lost far too early, and made me come away thinking I need to do more for this game. Looking at how much he did for the game, and so that was my tie, kind of on paper, to MicroShare. And then when I got a chance to meet her, as you say, it was love at first sight. She's such a doll. She is so sweet. Some resources aren't pets. They don't want to be given a bunch of carrots. They don't want to be loved on. She's the opposite. She wants all the love, all the treats, all the carrots, but she also has all of the talent. And I think this is exactly what I was expecting first time out from her, watching her work in the mornings, watching those big strides. She's a horse that wants more distance, wants more ground. And to me, Nick, this was the perfect debut. I know you want to win. You always want to win. But coming away with a race like that was very encouraging in terms of what we could see from her in the future. And we saw her work earlier on in the show. It seems like she is progressing very well. Yeah, no doubt. And I think that the the post-race uh, interviews with uh, Hall of Fame writer Mike Smith, he, he's got a knack uh, with the ladies, uh, the female racehorses, that is, and uh, certainly had proven that with uh, Zenyatta as just one, one example. But I think when you consider that uh, she, being by upstart, she was the highest uh, two-year-old in training purchase uh, in 2021. And she certainly has presented that. Loved her at the sale. Tom McCrocklin's uh, consignment uh, had her. But, um, you know, again, I, I think that you mentioned her personality. Mm -hmm. I think she's one that uh, could stand the, the rigors of, say, an Oaks Trail type of uh, a stance. But uh, you're on the right track there. I hope I'm on the right track. Forbidden Kingdom, uh, let's get him back and, and going uh, in A-plus form. We want to hear from you as well, and with regard to that, we want to present our Twitter question of the month for you right now. This one's a little bit tricky, too, so Nick, I'll ask you first, how can a horse be comfortably bedded down on shavings? And when we say bedded down, that's sort of how we set up their stall, whether it's shavings or straw, that's the terminology used there, but how can a horse be comfortably bedded down on shavings? Uh, I almost I almost feel as if this is a is actually a trick question, but uh, one thing I know of my significant other, um, there, there's various types of, of bedding. For example, with, with shavings, you could also have sawdust, you could have wood chips, and I, I guess it depends upon what what part of the country you're from. But a horse could quite easily be bedded down and be comfortable on shavings. Again, it depends on the depth of the shavings, which, uh, as a general rule, depending upon the trainer. Depending on the horse, some horses like it a bit more firm and others like it soft. It's much like we as humans would uh, particularly prefer. I'm more of a firm guy. Uh, my wife tends to be more of a, you know, she likes it deeper and bedded and whatnot. But I, I think for shavings, it's a bit of a misnomer because people think shavings, they're just like wood chips. Like if your gardener comes mm -hmm. in and he chops up and chips up your tree. Right. It's not that. Shavings are actually pliable. Uh, they're soft. And I, I think it really comes down to the consistency of it, you know, and the mix. Because straw, there are aspects of straw that may not be comfortable either. You could have wheat straw. You could essentially have straw that it was a bad season. Well, we had a drought. Some horses can have allergies, right? And that Absolutely. would kind of lean you in one direction or another, depending on the bedding. Likely, that's why you would put them on, on shavings or a horse that uh, would have the tendency if I were a horse, I'd probably eat a lot of straw, so they'd probably put me on shavings yeah. as well. <laughs> Just kidding. But uh, not a straw guy, but who knows? If I were a horse, I could have been. It's all personal preference, and that is kind of the mark of the good trainers that train for my racehorse. They can assess each horse as an individual and mm -hmm. figure out what is going to be best for them. So if you have any thoughts out there at home, be sure to share those with us on social media as well. As the holidays approach, we did want to remind you that what better gift than the gift of a racehorse? And I'm, true story, I have done this. I have given these gift cards as gifts to our teachers. I've had a few teachers over the years that have been really interested in horses, interested in horse racing. And so this has been my teacher gift to them, is the gift of a racehorse. So head to the app if you would like to purchase one today. Uh, no better time than now uh, for the uh, the holidays. And uh, again, last minute, it's easy. Just go to uh, myracehorse.com slash app slash gift cards and give that gift today. In fact, Cash is, uh, I think his third grade teacher, Mr. Z. Yep. Um, 
you remember Mr. Z, the racehorse. So yes. uh, I was, <laughs> was kind enough for the Zayats had actually given me a hat to give to Mr. Z. He automatically became involved and took him out to the racetrack and he just happens to be one of the uh, 25,000 shareholders <laughs> now as a, as a school teacher. So, so Mr. Z, if you're out there, again, this is a, a most wonderful time. If you haven't involved yourself in the sport, it's, it's an easy way to do it. Look at uh, Miss Sakamoto. Mm -hmm. You're talking $54, uh, daughter of Justify, part of the six uh, from Phasing Tipton. You have an opportunity to invest $105 with uh, endless limitless potential, not to mention the fact everything's transparent. Right. If you want to learn about the game, uh, this is, I think, the best ground level opportunity for you uh, to do so. So don't be bashful. As the promo says, the opportunity is there to get involved in this great game. And so we hope that you will. And we hope you've enjoyed the first edition of Wire to Wire, the show solely focused on the My Racehorse Stable. You can be involved at any level that you're comfortable with. If you're already an owner, please jump on in and add to your stable. If you're new to us, share this on social media. Let your friends know, tag them, and let us know what you think of the show. Until next month, happy holidays. Enjoy the rest of the season. Stay safe, stay healthy. We will see you back in 2022 with another edition of Wire to Wire.